Welcome. Today I'm going to give you a tour of our studio. You have to enter through the garden entrance. So come on in. And these are my ducks, which I'll show you more of later. But come on inside. I always commandeered this corner of this room and everything I would do over here with the students that I would tutor and of course I have all my collection of books, art books, and my easel was always here. But then when my kids grew up and I decided to do the studio full time, I told the family they had to take out everything and I was going to have this uh, be the studio. And I got a lot of resistance at first, but now they're used to it and they're happy I did it. So right over here is where I keep all my wet on wet colors. Um, and you can see that this tray just comes right out and I'll set it on the table when a student is doing wet on wet. I have pretty much all the basic colors in this tray like system and so for my classes um, we have wet on wet trays that each student can get and it's really handy this way these are actually spice containers but i really love these jars because they have this flat side and that allows them to be tilted like this as well so when they're open you can see the pigment at the bottom or you can just have them like this. And these other colors that are in this tray are some of the lesser used colors, but I do like to have them all together so that people don't have to get up and find their colors. And I keep this over here by the door because the wet and wet colors like to be cool. I also have other things in these drawers, like this drawer is just dedicated to graphite pencils and um, charcoal pencils and miscellaneous things like that. I've got some more of them here together with pastels and um, kind of keep these three drawers for the different charcoal sets and materials that I like to use. Over here, I keep all the clips for clipping onto the board. This is obviously painter's tape and stretching tape. And here we've got the indelible markers and some tacks, a little bit more tape that didn't fit into the drawer. I also have more jars in here. And I might have some more in this <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we have to talk about how many brushes I have. I've been saving brushes for a long time because I've had the studio already 17 years and before that I was already an artist and I rarely throw away brushes. So look at this. Oh my goodness. This is a lot of brushes. <laughs> And I'll tell you what these brushes are for. These are mainly acrylic and oil brushes. They are acrylic bristle. And I also have a natural bristle, a lot of natural bristle brushes in various sizes because natural bristle brushes I find work really well for watercolor veil painting. If I'm using oil paints, I like to have something that's more easily washable. That would be something that doesn't quite suck up the color like a natural brush does. This is where I keep all the little brushes. And again, they're for a variety of purposes. You can see we have watercolor brushes, the soft ones and a multitude of them. Then we have lots of acrylic brushes, gouache brushes, and so on, of all kinds of sizes. 
let's talk about what's under here. First of all, we have the all important duck food, <laughs> but that's not for art. Here we have some different sets. This one is the oil bar set. I have to keep it all in this airtight box because these things are full of oil pigments and they really gas off quite a lot. So in order for them not to dry out, as well as for my own health, I keep them in this airtight, pretty tight tin. In here, I just have the sculpting materials for the children. I use a variety of tools, including chopsticks and knitting needles, but also your standard clay tools. Then I let them have Sculpey, which I really like. It's one of those easily moldable clays which can be baked in your own oven, and then the children can color them with paints. This is a large oil pastel set that my hubby once bought for me, and you can see it's well used. We love the oil pastels when we are not ready to get the oil paints out. In here, oh, this might be an empty box. Ready for something. Let's see. Oh yeah, I just love boxes and units. I don't know what I used it for in the past, uh, but it's a really nice box. I can't read what that says. This one's by from Daniel Smith, when Daniel Smith was uh, an art creator and supply maker here in Seattle. And what's inside here is all kinds of calligraphy materials, from pens to extra inks and ink bottles and so on. Now this box is a charcoal box. And if you see, it has a break here. That tells me that that is the bottom. This is really old, but I keep all the charcoal that if I'm going to teach a class somewhere, I have the rubber kneaded erasers and I have them titled for the willow, types of willow and stubs and so on. So that people put them away. They know which box to put it in. That helps me. This set, was actually given to me by a student. Danielle, if you're watching this video, I still use your set. And um, it's got all these wonderful graphite pencils in it and, and uh, chalk pastels. And this cute little guy. This down here is where I keep the acrylic paint. And I like to put everything inside these kinds of boxes with the snapping lids because it's really easy to carry around, but also because it keeps the odor down. On this side, we have the all-important mat cutter. And of course, every studio has to have a set of tools. In here, all the different materials needed for framing and hanging, including tacks and wire. Oops, here I have some miscellaneous watercolors. Um, I have more watercolors that I keep handier than this, but these are some extra paints that I've still used. Now, down here we have some really interesting items. This is a brush holder and you stick your brushes in here and fold this up and roll it up so that you can transport the brushes without ruining the bristles. A great option for people is a canvas portfolio bag because you can fold it up and put it away easily. Um, this is a really great one that I bought some years ago. Pretty good size for 24 by 32 inch paper. This one is actually made out of leather from some years ago, and these would be kind of expensive on today's budget, but you can see that it has a really good size as well as extremely sturdy 
candles. I'm going to show you more ideas for portfolios and less expensive ways to keep your art in another video. For now, I think that's enough of this side of the room. We could also talk about the books and work our way through the other parts of the studio, but we'll catch that next time. Thanks for watching and let me know how you like this.